Hello, church. I'm Pastor Jeremy Peters of the Court Street United Methodist Church in downtown Flint. Today I'm coming to you from the Parsonage as we continue our series, Isn't It Ironic? In this series, we're looking at some of the most ironic moments and stories in the Bible as we discover that the irony in the Bible is an important part of the message of the Bible. Last week, we learned that irony can mean a situation in which a person's actions have the opposite effect of what was intended. We saw that sometimes in the Bible, irony means that evil actions lead to happy consequences for God's people. Today, we're going to hear another spin on that story, this time from the Old Testament book of Exodus. The book of Exodus begins with God's people living in the land of Egypt. It's been hundreds of years since the time of Joseph, who made a place for the Israelites in that foreign land. The Israelites have prospered and thrived in Egypt. In fact, they have multiplied so much that Pharaoh, the ruler of Egypt, is afraid of the Israelites. He is worried that the Israelites will somehow damage Egyptian culture, or that they will rise up and take over the country. In order to keep the Israelites down, he passes a series of laws enslaving the Israelites and forcing them to labor under impossible conditions. Even so, the Israelites continue to multiply. Finally, Pharaoh decides to take drastic action. He orders that every newborn Hebrew boy should be thrown into the river and left to drown. It's one of the most terrifying and evil acts in all of the Bible. But the Israelites are clever, and they find many ways of saving their children. One mother gives birth to a son, and then, in a moment of desperation, she puts him in a basket and floats him down the river, praying that God will watch over him. In an ironic twist, Pharaoh's own daughter finds the child and decides to adopt him as her own. And so it is that young Moses grows up with one foot in two different worlds. He holds on to his Israelite heritage and identity, even as he is raised in the ways of Egyptian high society. Many years later, when God decides to set the Israelites free from their slavery in the land of Egypt, God knows just who to call. What better person to speak for the people than a man who already has access to Pharaoh, a man who is both an Israelite slave and an Egyptian prince? All these years later, it turns out that by trying to destroy the Hebrew children, Pharaoh paved the way for the very revolution he was trying to prevent. Last week, we saw that God can bring good out of even evil deeds. In the story of Moses, we see that often those who seek to do evil sow the seeds of their own destruction. The Bible is filled with these sorts of moments. In the book of Esther, a man named Haman seeks to destroy the Jews, and especially his rival Mordecai. In an ironic twist, Haman's plot backfires, and he himself ends up being hanged from the very gallows he built for Mordecai. And of course, the early Christians loved to point out that the devil paved the way for God's greatest victory and his own defeat when he chose to attack the Son of God. All of these stories can give us comfort in a world where so many people seek to do violence and harm. The history books and the Bible teach us that over and over again, dictators and terrorists and villains end up being their own worst enemies. How can God lose when evil seems so intent upon defeating itself? Let's pray. God of the underdog, you rescued Moses and thwarted Haman. Work your mischief among us today, 
that the evil intentions of violent men might backfire, that the downtrodden and oppressed peoples of this world might be set free. Through Jesus, who defeated an empire by dying, we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for spending some time with us today. You can find a new devotion right here at the same time next week. Until then, keep on laughing. Thank <laughs> you.